Uh, first up, uh, you know him from such films as Superbad, Juno, Nick and Norris for the Playlist, uh, Youth and Revolt, Crystal Fairy, and Arrested Development TV show. And this is the end. Uh, Michael Sarah. Welcome. Hello. Uh, next up, uh, he, he's been on stage in such plays as The Starry Messenger, uh, Suburbia, and After Ashley, uh, and on film in uh, Lime Life, Margaret, and uh, Igby Goes Down, uh, Kieran Culkin. And lastly, uh, she has been in Parenthood uh, in the film Enough Said. She's the editor-in-chief of Rookie, has also written for The Believer uh, and L, and she recently graduated from Oak Park and River Forest High School in Illinois. Tavi Gevinson. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Hey. Hi. Hello. And Hello. thanks all you guys for being here. Uh, how many of you have seen the play already? All right. Very good, very nice. And the rest of you should catch it. Uh, there, you, you guys have a show tonight. Yes. You know, you could try to go tonight. If you're or not whatever. busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You've come this far. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, the three of them play some young kids in New York uh, in the '80s who are. There was a really good line on the poster I meant to steal and I forgot. But you know, there's some some drugs and and some confusion and uh, and um, some romance and all kinds of great stuff. And you should all definitely go see it. Um, <laughs> okay, are we done? <laughs> Great, thank you guys. <laughs> Give them your money now. Um, all right. Uh, so I wanted to ask first, uh, when I, in I did a piece on the play and them for Grantland, and I interviewed the playwright Kenneth Lonergan, and he had said a quote that I thought was really funny. Um, he said, uh, I'm glad I'm not that age again. I feel bad for them, and I'm interested in them, and I wish them well, but I would do almost anything to avoid being in that room with them. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys, uh, and it applies more to some than others. Um, when you think back of yourselves at the age that the characters are, uh, what do you remember? <laughs> um, so my character's 19 and I am 18. <laughs> um, what are you planning on remembering <laughs> a year from now? I believe even yesterday I like came into work an hour before the show, we have to do this vocal warm-up on stage, and I was like, what does it feel like to be a person? Like, a real person? Not, like, a person where, like, all of your feelings are confusing. So I guess, <laughs> for me, um, it's not, like, looking back in this, like, bittersweet. It's just like, oh, God, my day was really weird, and now my night will be weird because the show is about being like 19 and horrible. <laughs> Please see it. It's a winner. Uh, Michael? Oh, uh, that was a great answer. I don't know. I don't want to temper it. Um, that happened during the vocal warm-up? <laughs> no, I came in maybe yesterday or the day before, and I was like, Ugh, what does it feel like to be a person? And our stage manager was like, it's a lot better than being a teenager. You'll get there. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, and I guess I thought that because I had graduated from high school and was going straight into, like, a kind of real person job, like, everything would be fine. But if anything, playing Jessica probably, like, Kenny the playwright and Anna, our director, were like, you're... It's not like, oh, you're not going to know what's real and you're going to think you're your character. But, um, but they were like, it does kind of infect you. I wouldn't be yelling at a, another human being every night otherwise. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe I blame the play for all my anxiety. <laughs> Please see it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and what about you guys that the question does actually apply to? Um, yeah, what do we remember from being this age, yeah, yeah. basically? I don't know. I think I remember hanging out with my friends and just wasting so much time, being very stupid. And I was, it's kind of weird because I was working when I was 18. I kind of, I was working and there was nothing really too normal about it. I was hanging out with people a lot older than me most of the time, right, right, weirdly. Right. Yeah, so I kind of dodged, dodged, I guess, the communal weird feeling. Nice, nice. Bullet. Can't. <laughs> nothing. I, I got you don't nothing. remember? Uh -huh. No. 
Too far. It's a haze. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, one more question about the past, because when I interviewed you guys, Tavi had told a funny story about the a high school party she recently went to, so I just wanted to ask about maybe if you re- recall the first party that you attended as teenagers, and if you want to mention if there were if the first drug store that you have too because there's some drugs in the play that's you know that's up to you that's optional nine years old (laughs) it's a crazy party (laughs) no um i wasn't really involved in too many of those kind of circles i think drug use was not really like a thing for me growing up right right um Oh, I wish I could elaborate or say something funny. No. no. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. Cool. Uh, Sorry. So yeah, more. A we'll more get PG, better. We'll get better. <laughs> a more PG question about your about your youth. Uh, um, do you? What, is there something that you remember being fans of? Like the first thing you were a fan of? You know, musician and actor, comedian and Karen. I know, big into wrestling as a kid. So anything like that that comes to mind when you think of the first thing that you remember being like, wow, I'm really into this. Yeah, the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, WrestleMania six. Nice, nice. It was my first, my first hero. Very cool. Still my hero. <laughs> Actually, he's on the back of my phone. There he is. Yeah? Nice. An iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other guys? Um, I really liked The Simpsons when I was like nine years old. You know, The Simpsons was amazing, and every Sunday there was a new episode, and then we would like at lunch. Uh, all my friends would like you know sitting around in fourth grade would like be able to remember almost every joke you know because you only see it once and then they would play it like one one other time through the week you know and then you'd get it another chance to see it but for the most part you had to watch it really intently and memorize it you know and then we would be able to kind of recreate it that was fun that's awesome yeah it's a good show you should check it out <laughs> <laughs> really recommend The Simpsons <laughs> cartoon uh, Tavi um. Mm, uh, lots of things. Um, I, uh, I will pro like today. I went back and reread Ghost World, which was like very important to me as a book and movie in middle school. And I guess at sometimes I think about it with this show because. Like, Michael's character is really obsessed with these, like, antique toys. And there's, like, and the main girl in Ghost World has all of the, you know, is, like, a collector, kind of, and has all these records and vintage clothes. And I guess I, but there's something more that it's not just like, oh, it's cool and vintage. Like, there seems to be this, like, sad, missing childhood thing going on. So I guess that's on my mind because I read it today. But I don't remember the first thing. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. first thing is much less cool than <laughs> Ghost World. Um, nice. Yeah. Sounds great. Those are good answers. Um, uh, back to the play. Uh, you guys wrap up January 4th, I believe. Um, so how does it feel right now? Is it like the last few weeks of senior year kind of feeling? Oh, yeah. It's weird. It's felt like that for a while, though. Kind of like the end is near for weeks, and it's only closer now. Well, yeah. it moves so fast, I've found. Yeah. Like... It, the Chicago run was six weeks, and this has been, like, 16 weeks. Um, but it, it's it been going by so fast, and I find myself, like, really preparing myself for... For deep depression. Yeah. Right. I find myself telling myself the same things um, you he- think about when you're, like, going through a breakup. Like, there are other kinds of love. There are other sources of happiness. <laughs> I just, it's weird to imagine um, not doing the show every night and knowing, like, no matter what kind of day I've had or whatever, I can, like, go in and do this and really love it. Um, it's horrible. I don't know. <laughs> um, is there, are there, are there some kind of party at the end, right? There's some kind of, are there traditions when you wrap up this kind of thing? None of us have ever done it. Right, right. We don't know. Alcohol? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and as far as, um, you know, what comes next, um, has doing this play made you guys reconsider what that is? Um, Kieran, I know for you, this was kind of a, a dream for a while. And, uh, you know, you had mentioned that you really weren't thinking about what's next because this was the, this was the thing. Um, and I just wonder now that it's coming to that point that you maybe, uh, are influenced, um, to think about what's next. Um, you know, has doing the play changed your mind about what you want to do in the future? You know, not just directly next, but just kind of in general with your careers. 
I'm still very much there. Like, I'm just trying to... Um, it, it is flying by really fast. We have 37 more shows left. So I, I know that because I count down after each one. But um, because I know I'm going to miss it so much, and I'm trying to really appreciate and be in the moment and all that. So I, I can't... Sometimes, um, like, a, another job prospect pops up, but I can't get my head around that. I just want to appreciate and do this. Right, absolutely. Um, same, I guess. I don't know. It's pretty open um i would love to be able to do so i mean if like kenny wants to write another play like this with a part for a young woman i'll be there but um i could try playing like a middle-aged man in one of his <laughs> other plays i don't know i want to do more nice <laughs> um and i know that you know these kind of things um the, 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 the vibe uh, comes and goes, but has there been uh, a night so far in New York where you guys were like, wow, we totally crushed that? Just high-fiving each other afterwards, like you just won the Super Bowl? Those, I mean, the nights when we don't do that are the exception. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then we'll have a weird night. We'll just be like, it, we'll do a half-hearted high-five. <laughs> none of us will really believe it. <laughs> um, no, well... It's like everything happens. You have like a night where you're like, uh, Tavi said it really well one time. You have nights where you're on stage and you're like, I can't believe people are watching me do this right now. <laughs> that's, that's a, I'm in a living nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, and other nights when you just don't think. What? I was just going to say, it, it's like um, there's a Louis C.K. bit about how he recently smoked pot and wasn't prepared that um, it would be a lot stronger than it was when he was a teenager. And so he talks about being with these, like, 19-year-olds, like, at a comedy club and, ha and being extremely high and being like, is this normal? Like, yeah, just hold your hand here right now. Like, that's normal. And sometimes a show feels where you're, like, kind of half self-aware and, like, what are my arms doing? Mm -hmm. But that's rare, kind of. Yeah. You feel everyone thinking... They don't know how to be a person. <laughs> <laughs> and that's their job. <laughs> well, and I also, I mean, just talking to you guys, it seems like when you have mistakes that you're kind of lingering on, it's something that is very hard for the audience to pick up on. Uh, is that a, a sense of comfort that at the end of the day you know that maybe I'm being a little neurotic and, uh, you know, only I know that that was a thing that wasn't supposed to happen? It's kind of true. Like, things will go really wrong to the point where it's like... You've, like, Kieran's brother came and saw the show recently, and something went really wrong. A piece of a phone broke, fell apart, and we needed it for, like, another thing in the scene. Right. So Kieran, like, acting on his feet really... Um, I, di I, didn't, I didn't do it that well. I, I thought you'd I had it. to. There was a replacement phone that I was told months ago was on the stage in the laundry basket, yeah. so I had to, like, go fetch it. But, but I wasn't never sure been it was through, there. Yeah. No. And then when I go to unplug the broken phone, I find out that it's wrapped around with twisty ties and yeah. shit. It took forever <laughs> to undo this thing and try to act as I'm talking to him. Yeah. That this is natural. Still like, oh, driving the scene. Trade out my phone because I broke it like I do almost every day. <laughs> yeah. Like and it's normal. I thought it was clearly like, okay, everyone's with me on this. It's Everyone knows it's broke. The yeah. scene is broken. Which I think most people did later when maybe. I asked. I was like, sorry about the phone thing. They were like, yeah, that's okay. We went with it. But my brother and his girlfriend thought it was part of the show. Yeah, and his brother had seen the show. Yeah. It might yeah. say more about your brother. It says more about your He's brother. Like, I always walk out situation. during the phone bit. I just don't like the phone bit. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I remember watching it. I was like, did you do that last time? I, like, I kind of remember that. Nice. Um, another thing that I uh, am always impressed by, the t two times I've seen it, uh, uh, Kieran's character rolls uh, joints Cons consistently throughout the play that are then smoked uh, and I just find that impressive uh, that talent yeah um, practice yes a lot of practice and I'm just wondering uh, the rapper Waka Flocka Flame he recently was looking to hire a joint roller so have you ever considered kind of taking this to the next level professional joint rolling yeah, well, yeah if there's money in it you know we can, we can talk <laughs> no, <laughs> give him a like contact yeah. do you travel with him I think so yeah yeah oh yeah I mean yes definitely <laughs> It's an interesting job. <laughs> what a life. What do you tell your family? <laughs> you tell your kids. <laughs> you know, there's a thing that happened in California. This is going way off topic. Go for it. Go. But there was some kind of law that was passed that I any porn that was made in the Los Angeles County, they had to have a condom. Uh -huh. They had to be wearing condoms. So I guess that means that someone's job who works for the government <laughs> to watch like every porn made in California and be like, yeah, okay, they got one. Or go visit sets and be like, want to see those condoms, people. 
<laughs> off topic. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, and Do you want you that guys, job? I mean, I'm not doing anything in January. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how we're going to end the show. <laughs> You, got, you can't be at the rap party. You got to fly out to California the next time. Um, and uh, Michael and Tavi's characters, they uh, dance. You guys dance, and I'm, uh, which is also very fun. And I'm wondering, uh, has that evolved over the time of the show? Have you kind of changed up the moves? And also, have you taken these moves to the dance floor, like at, a, at the club, maybe? Um, Good question. I feel like maybe the story of what's happening during the dance has evolved. Maybe before, because basically we have this kind of weird, serious, sad moment, but of like, that I think connects us. And then he puts on a record and it's like this upbeat Frank Zappa song and I start dancing and then he starts dancing. And I think before I was like, oh, she just, maybe the only way for me to not be like self-conscious about it was to be like, she just goes crazy. <laughs> um, but lately, or in as the show has gone on i feel like it's been a lot more about trying to lift his spirits and trying to be in it together change the mood of the room yeah yeah nice yeah but if anything we've gotten more limited with our actual dancing abilities okay <laughs> doing it every night you kind of like getting you, worse you lose your your good ideas okay. about what it is to dance <laughs> do an approximation of that yeah um and um, like you guys mentioned, this is all your first time on Broadway. Um, did you have certain expectations as to what that meant? And then now doing the play, have, has there been things like maybe there's a Broadway community that you guys have been welcomed into? Like, do you hang out with the Lions from Lion King after the, after the show, anything like you that? You did get a haircut at the Lion King, right? I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, but that's it. I <laughs> haven't hung out with the Lions or the... No, the, no nothing. Giraffes. That takes time. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. It takes more than just a few months on Broadway to hang out with the Lions. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get there. <laughs> um, and uh, have you just been kind of pleasantly surprised that your play, that's you know just the three of you guys, definitely different subject material, has you know managed to succeed and flourish uh, on Broadway, where it's just all these big spectacles for the most part. I just find that no good can come of which I did when we were in previews. I think I was very stressed out and felt a lot of the kind of pressures of like being in a Broadway play, just in that it's supposedly like uh, you have to there's like no excuse for not knowing what you're doing. And I don't know, maybe a lot of it was pressure I put on myself, but I have found that there's just no, like nothing good can come of being on stage and thinking about that stuff and it won't help you and it's not productive and fear will, will not help you is something that I repeated to myself. So I guess, and also, well, as with every kind of uh, institution or like entertainment thing that has the, a legacy, um, there are definitely, uh, no, I don't know. Mm, I probably don't know what I'm saying or like shouldn't say <laughs> go it. Go for it, go for it. I just mean like, like you can look at, like, all right, uh, people are, you know, like a family friend from out of town will see the show and be like, and did you know Marlon Brando was on <laughs> stage here? And you're like, yeah, but like, so were like all of these people or I don't know. It's just not everything is not this great ceremony of like, I don't know. I, you can't like go to work every day and be like, I'm in a Broadway play. Yeah, I remember we were sort of being told that like <clears throat> we were gonna feel a lot of stress about mm -hmm. this, that this was a big deal, and it's gonna it's gonna come at you and yeah. things. Like, but I just wanted to show up and do the play because <laughs> I really liked it. And then if just if we sort of paid attention to our job and just got to be up there and do that, I didn't feel any pressure or stress of that, nor did I feel any sort of welcoming into a community because I'm just I'm involved in the play. Yeah. I just want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Absolutely. I don't know if that's a cheap answer, but it's no, the truth, no. yeah. It makes perfect sense. Um, can you talk about your relationship with the play a little bit also? Um, you know, you kind of go farther back, Karen. Yeah, um, I go back over 12 years with it. Did a production of it in London and the West End, uh, playing Warren, his character. Uh, not well, <laughs> which I remember telling you about. Warren not well. Yeah, Warren not well. <laughs> <laughs> Later they changed his... <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I, sp I spent, like, you know, the next 12 years trying to find any kind of production uh, of any kind. 
gave him the script four years ago, and then we got to do a production of it briefly, very briefly, in, in Australia. Two weeks. Mm-hmm. Four weeks of rehearsal for two weeks mm-hmm. of shows. <laughs> it was bananas. Yeah. And then took another two years to get it up in Chicago to get here, and it's... It's a long journey, but a lot of and fun. And you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's really, really great. Yeah, you know, it only took 12 years to <laughs> do it again, you know. Um, and you guys also were in Chicago uh, doing yeah. the uh, um, uh, preview part, uh, and uh, you were all living in the same apartment building. Yeah. Not in the same apartments, uh, no. separate apartments. Um, and how important was that for your uh, bonding? Uh, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, yeah, we were like going to work and seeing each other every day, and then like we li- li- me and Kieran literally lived on the same floor, floor uh-huh. same like down the hall. We yeah. rode the elevator up together. So I don't know. All pretenses kind of go away, you know. You kind of get, but we already were friends, and yeah, I don't know. It was fun. It kind of then it made it weird when we came here and we all had like separate. We just homes. worked together. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah. still feels like. Um, but it's just been going on for so long now, and you're in these dressing rooms. It's, like, s- this very intimate setting. It didn't... Like, even though I think we went out, like, every night in Chicago, or it feels that way, and we haven't done that here, yeah. it doesn't... I don't know. I still feel like I see you guys all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, cast bonding. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um... You've talked a good amount about uh, Mario Kart backstage yeah. being important. Uh, you, were al- you guys are also playing a lot of Monopoly, uh, the Disney Villains uh, edition, I believe. We, we upgraded our Mario Kart, though, since we were playing the, the 64 yeah, Mario Kart. Yeah. Now we're playing the, the new one. Oh. The Wii U. The Wii U. Yeah. And we have Seinfeld Monopoly now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. Upgraded the Monopoly as well. <laughs> nice, nice. That's what I was going to ask. What, what other activities have been worked into the, the backstage routine? But it sounds just like different versions of Monopoly <laughs> yeah. and Mario Kart. Yeah, we yeah. upped the ante with, for Broadway. <laughs> nice. There you go. <laughs> 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 and every play since you got Seinfeld has every show has been better and better. I think. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I watched a couple episodes of Master Chef last week. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. No, not <laughs> in my life here. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, oh, okay. we all did. You were there. I watched one. Yeah. <laughs> episodes of Baby Daddy. Oh yeah, a great show, Baby Daddy on Netflix. What's that? Just check it out. Just go to Netflix. It's okay. awesome. Yeah. So don't go see the play. Go home and watch Baby Daddy yeah. on Netflix. Um, and um, another thing that happens in plays uh, is that the understudies uh, have to come on sometimes. Oh, yeah. um, what, I'm sure that's a strange feeling. I mean, you're obviously sick and whatever it might be. Um, what, what's that like watching someone else do your, do your character? Well, the weirdest time was when Kieran did the first act and then he couldn't do the second act, so the understudy came out and did the second act as Dennis, and I had to just kind of pretend that that was, no, you know. It's like when the mom changed on Fresh Prince yeah, of yeah, Bel-Air yeah, or something. Exactly. <laughs> and you're like, everything's cool. Mom looked different. She was terrible. And the new mom was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Viv, on Viv. But there's a whole other story to that, too, that I don't know if you want to get there, into. No, I mean, I, w- I would do that. It's a hell of a story. It is, but, but even before we get that, like, because he, he played, we have one understudy for the, for the both of us. Oh, yeah. But I didn't, I, haven't, I didn't get to see how he played me, and you didn't get to see how he played no. your part, right? No, no. no. But, like, you, you were sick first, so the most bizarre thing was standing in the exact same place that we've been doing for months, and he's wearing your clothes <laughs> and saying your shit. It's and surreal. I just, yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Um, makes yeah. Sense. What was the story? Oh, the oh the the reason I couldn't do the second act was because I was um, before I went on stage I was telling him my stomach was kind of upset but like you know I'll give him a sign if I, if like my stomach hurts which I, I don't think is very professional but fucking <laughs> it was it was this for some reason we came up but th- this was the gesture and right when he walked in I gave him this right, right away yeah. to let him know like I'm in trouble I got 45 minutes on stage. And I made it up until the last, I would say, 90 seconds when I had the little, like, speech before I walk off. And my stomach said, nope. <laughs> and I got up and I said, hold on. And I ran off the stage and very, very loudly started vomiting in a bucket. Wow. <laughs> thinking that, I knew I was being loud, but I couldn't help it. It was food poisoning, it turns out. But I remember thinking, I know this is loud. They must <laughs> laugh. They must be laughing or something. But I was listening and they were like, it was. Yeah. It was so odd. <laughs> it was just like everyone was listening to yeah. the retching. It's like one of those things where you said, is it obvious if something goes wrong? And I 
it felt like the audience couldn't tell if the play just got like <laughs> really I had darkly there tragic. That night. They thought it was part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Because you're just sitting there. You said you were like looking at the door. You yeah. like lit up the joint. The sound of you dying behind it. <laughs> and the audience was like with you, like yeah. watching it. Like, oh, what like, an interesting oh. choice. Poor Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's been eating him alive for months. <laughs> Talks a big game, but <laughs> doesn't have much more time. <laughs> it's like a different play. <laughs> yeah. I just sat there and I smoked a joint, just waiting for him to come back yeah. or for something to happen. And I went to the bed and grabbed a comic book and it was stapled shut for some reason. <laughs> Because it, it wasn't real life up there. And I went like... <laughs> <laughs> waiting. Yeah. And then Felt the like understudy time. came out for you. No, then okay. actually Tavi came out because it was right before... They skipped uh, ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, then they skipped ahead. And, and then we just kept going and kind of like... That didn't happen. Yeah, yeah it's weird. Happen. It didn't affect me at all because I have no scenes with Kieran's character. Um, yeah. but, but you say hi for like two seconds. Yeah. yeah. But to like to the the understudy to the name is Nick Nick Lahane. He's had to he has the most stressful job. He has to show up and basically probably not work. But at at the drop of a hat, he's on stage in front of hundreds of people. Wow! Yeah. Uh, and he has to learn both parts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shout out to Nick Lahane. Yeah, Nick Lahane. <laughs> Go Nick. <laughs> he's got to do it in three and a half times now. Yeah. That's cool. Well, then it's also messed up that he's hoping that you guys get sick. I mean, let's face it. Yeah, he kind of is. I think. I said when I was walking out of the theater that night, because I stayed for the rest of the act because I was so sick, I was like walking out. He goes, oh, I hope you feel better. And I was like, you know me. And then he goes, <laughs> I mean it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to want you to feel better. <laughs> um, you guys, the two of you guys had been in New York before. I don't exactly remember what the experience. You'd lived here a little bit, maybe on and off. Never mind. Anyway, Tavi, uh, you were moving here for the play. Um, so what was that like, uh, you know, having that whole thing going on, also moving to New York? Um, yeah, I guess in Chicago, for part of the run, I was still living at my parents' house because I am from a suburb of Chicago. And then I moved into our apartment building. Um, and it was, you know, I don't think it's, like, necessary that your life parallels your character's life but it made kind of I will say moving here made the world I was walking into on stage every night slightly more real for me or like uh, I don't know I know that apartment now um, that the set is an apartment um, and I guess uh, I mean it has it is really crazy for to have this going on while I'm also kind of you know, I'm at the same... Like, I remember Kenny, our playwright, and Anna, our director, have many times kind of talked to us about just the weight of, like, what these characters are facing. Just, like, seeing... Being 19 or 21 and seeing the rest of your life before you. And even though I have probably more uh, of a defined path or, like, security or sense of direction than my character does... Uh, it's still a very strange thing, and I don't know. And then, I'll, and yeah, and then being in New York just makes it even crazier. Um, but but I could go on apple. and on about that. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. The big green apple. <laughs> New York City. Someone want, I once showed them a text from someone back <laughs> home who was like, "Stay safe in the green apple." <laughs> That's okay. Nice. <laughs> I was gonna. You're, so you're starting school, also, right? No. You're not. Um, I went through the application process, got in, deferred to take a gap year to do this and other stuff. But I don't think I'm going at anymore. NYU. At NYU. At okay. NYU. But I don't think I'm going anymore. Oh great. I was gonna. Ask, this is my last question before we're gonna go to Q and A. I'm gonna ask it anyways. Uh, if you guys, you know, have some advice as Tavi starts college, but or no. just kidding, starts her her life. Consider not going to college. <laughs> Really figure out if it's the right thing to do, <laughs> and then just make a decision based on how you feel. Go to college, get an education. Oh, Jesus. Well, <laughs> I'll be calling you guys up when, like, I should be in when I would normally be going to college, and be like, "Want to just get together at one of our houses and do the play?" <laughs> so. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna go to uh, audience questions. Michael Sarah, you wearing Supreme Man? What's that? You wearing Supreme the sneakers? 
Those are Adidas. Stan, Stan Smith's. Oh, man. This is really... All right. Anyways, um, for you guys, um, hi. What's the difference uh, between working in Broadway and doing, like, actual movies? Anyone can answer. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's really different. It's, like, very different um, just structurally. Like, you know, it's different. It's, I mean, you come to the same place every day and do the same thing every day. You know, I mean, the obvious thing about it is, like, it's a little more stable feeling in a way. Like, you kind of have a regular feeling job. You know where you're going to be in a week, you know. And yeah, for better or worse. I mean, you know, th the fun thing about movies is that it's always changing and that it's, like, two months and then you're done. It's not such, a, like, an endurance thing. You um, spend one whole day on, like, a five-minute scene, right. whereas we spent yeah. the last seven months... Yeah. Doing the same scene yeah. over and over. Yeah. And it's a lot more hands-on doing a play, too. Like, we, we, like, during rehearsals, you know, you show up, and we would, like, get a coffee and, like, talk for 10 minutes, and then, like, get your hands in it, and everyone's kind of, like, active instead of showing up and waiting to, until you're useful, which almost never happens. <laughs> yeah. And these are Adidas. Stan Smith's. <laughs> <laughs> Says Supreme? I could have got ripped off. The guy told me they were Adidas. <laughs> on the top, they're Adidas. Kieran, what are your thoughts on film and theater? I mean, except for the, the obvious reasons, uh, you know, that they they that they just are different. But um, I don't know that one is necessarily better than the other or more. I've I've heard these guys have heard me talk about this. I've heard like actors argue about which one feels more real or is more actual, and it's it's a, it's a ridiculous argument because. Already, we're just playing pretend no matter what. Um, but, you know, th this, yeah, it's just more involving. You get to work on the same thing. I know that when I go from this to working on a, a movie that I feel like I got to do one scene for a day, and then when it's gone, it's gone, and I feel like I didn't really get in it. Whereas mm -hmm. we do a show, and I say something weird. I might make a face at Michael, but I know that, like, tomorrow I'm going to try to make it right and <laughs> get another shot at it. Yeah, you can hate yourself for one night as opposed to forever. Yeah, <laughs> yes. How are you? Thank you so much for coming. This is nice. Very normal and funny, you know, conversation. I You're great, it. too. Yeah, thank you. First time, Very you're sweet. so cute. And eight, you're 18, so congratulations. You're a big star already. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank, and then, Kieran, you're so wild. You look so wild. By the way, your brother was a Makore. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then what about me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're cool, too. You're cool, too. Then uh, I remember, Michael, why are you drinking? Because you... It's coffee. Oh, coffee. You look so happy when you drug it. You know? It's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me really happy. You two make a uh, scar program together, right? So yes. you two great, great together already. By the way, I have a question for Michael. I'm a big fan. Then uh, actually you made a uh, super bad with uh, Jonah Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I, I don't know if he's your friend. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. he's your friend. Okay. Uh -huh. But he got Oscar nomination twice. Yes. So... My question is, are you envy him then you want to be Oscar worthy actor yes. or I've always you don't envied care him. you don't care and you love your well, life. I care. Okay, thank no, you so much. Of course I care. Nice to of course I care. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that beautiful <laughs> conversation. <laughs> that was really nice. It was a nice discourse. I encourage more questions like that. Um, this question is directed towards Tavi. I'm from the Midwest. I'm currently going to college in the Chicago area at Knox College. Uh -huh. um, I'm friends with some people from your high school that are older than you by a little bit. Um, and I'm also considering moving to New York City and really into Rookie and all that stuff. You really inspire me a lot. Thank you. Um, I'm currently doing an internship at Scholastic. And I'm just wondering if, like, since you're moving to New York City and you're not that much different in age than me, like... Have you found it to be really inspiring in ways like different from Chicago creatively and like just in the all art and stuff? Like, how has it been for you? Um, New York versus Chicago, being a young creative person. Um, I I'm glad I I'm summarizing it. Oh no, I was oh. just thinking back to the last thing. Oh god, <laughs> sorry. Um, I so I guess I'm really glad I like grew. I'm still growing up, but I'm glad I grew up at a younger age in Chicago because. I feel like it's generally, you know, like no one moves to Chicago to make it. There isn't that kind of underlying desperation and anxiety that I do feel here or like in LA. But there's, um, here there are just so many, there are just different resources 
but there, but I do find, um, I don't know. There are a lot of different factors, but I guess, uh, wherever you can kind of, I don't know, but Chicago still cities that aren't New York still have a lot of really great resources and a lot of culture. And, uh, that's, they're both great. I don't know. It's very hard to, to say briefly, but if you're thinking about moving here, um, yes, it is a very nice living here. I, I don't know if I can come up with as good a question as the uh, previous couple ones, but uh, what I would like to hear from you guys is, since this is set in 1982, and obviously 1982 is not a year you guys experienced, what did you learn about that year that maybe both situates the play, and then uh, what was it that you learned universally about your characters and relationship to youth that you can talk about a little bit more than uh, uh, in terms of what Kenneth was giving you some tips on and, in, and then what your own insights brought in? I mean, I think the year was just sort of a just the backdrop because that's the year that he experienced this because a lot of this is based off of his real experiences and um, we didn't have to like go and explore what 1982 was like um, in any sort of way um, I don't know what else to like yeah um, well it's kind of you know what I feel I learned from the play is it's kind of universal and timeless yeah. the I mean the feeling and the subject matter and and kind of ageless in a way, too. I mean, the characters are having their first kind of um, experience where they're coming to terms with things dying in a way. You know, like this friendship, this or a, a way that something exists not being able to function anymore and it having to st end. And I think that's something that keeps happening in life, you know, but, yeah. Yeah, at all sorts of ages. It just seems to yeah. be more intense at that age. Right. I will say one thing Kenny talked to us about was uh, kind of, although briefly, was um, being that age at that time and kind of having these parents who had been idealistic hippies and then suddenly Reagan was president. And I guess my character talks about that a little bit. And um, But I also think, I mean, I feel like even people our age are like, oh, people cared in the 90s or something, <laughs> even though they didn't, or that's not even the stereotype. So I feel like that's that is something you feel at this age if you are like the characters in the play raised by certain kinds of like progressive liberal parents or something as you feel like you've inherited a mess. Hi. Hey. Um Michael, you're our celebrity crush. We love right. you. <laughs> um, also, our question is um, for everybody: What is the favorite, your favorite, like movie or something that you've worked on, and would you do it again? I'll handle the first part of the question, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I just had to make a joke. Um, <laughs> what's our favorite movie? You said collectively. So work on it. That you've worked on. That we've worked on. Oh, that's an important point. Um, <laughs> hmm. I don't know. They're not really for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, well, I like the movie that Kieran and I did together, Scott Pilgrim. It was like seven months of shooting. And yeah, it was, that was a lot of yeah. fun. It was a lot yeah. of fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was really weird when we finished working on that movie because it was like every day. I mean, for me, I've worked almost every day on it, and it was like seven months, and it was really weird to leave. And I love the movie. I can watch that movie and really remember every day 